It is um, 6.37 p.m. on February 3rd, 2020, and we are recording this, and I am calling the special meeting of the Community Resources Committee to order um, for our retreat. I believe this is the first time a council committee itself has actually held a retreat. Um, because this is a special meeting and it is a retreat, we do not have any public comment scheduled for tonight. Per our rules, we are allowed to choose not to do that, and we have. It follows similar guidance and practice from other council retreats to keep it an inward focused meeting in that sense, but it is still open to the public and we are recording it and minutes are being taken. So the first item, I will go over the whole set of the agenda with some timings before we move on to the first item. Um, at about 6.35, which is about now, we will talk about goals of the, of the committee for approximately 45 minutes and then we will move on around 7.20 to the evaluation of measures when making recommendations to the town council with a couple of different discussions related to that, and that should last about an hour. At 8.20, uh, we'll begin talking about collaboration with town committees, uh, since this is the community resources committee that tends to have to deal with stuff that comes from other committees and all, we should talk about how we collaborate and um, who we might need to collaborate with. Um, around 8.55, we will move to ways to increase responsibilities within the committee itself for about 15 minutes. And then at 9.05, we'll try to identify with um, Dave Zomack's help documents that might be useful to consideration of measures and see if we I've created a draft and then I published that and then I saw a whole lot more and found some more. So, but we can talk about that. Um, Pat had her hand up, hold on a second. Yeah. And then at 9.20, if there's any announcements, we'll take them um, and items not anticipated, if there are any. Um, and at 9.30, we will adjourn. And one other thing, since it's a retreat, there will be no business and votes tonight on anything. Pat. Um, what I, I don't know whether it goes in uh, items not anticipated, but um, GOL has been talking about uh, separating this committee into two committees, and I think that should be part of our discussion this evening. Let's take that with goals of the Community Resources Committee, because I think that's best where it might fit. Um, and then it can also be threaded into potential documents, documents for our work and com committees to collaborate because it all kind of interrelates, but we can focus on that a little bit with the goals of the committee. Um, so that does move us on to our first agenda item, which is goals of the Community Resources Committee. Um, I don't really have a plan for how to run this portion because this item was requested by others, um, so I would love to hear what people's goals are. That's sort of the point of this discussion, is to figure out what other people and what our committee members are seeing as potential goals for this committee. So I'm gonna let other people talk when they're ready. Feel free someone to start the conversation off. Please use the mic. Okay. To preserve the heart of Amherst, uh, the history, culture, tradition, and livability, quality of life of the town, which means we touch on many things, but don't have to get too deep in others. Uh, for example, we don't have to get too deep into the capital projects, except in so far they affect neighborhoods and um, whatever. So, for example, I was talking today with Gabriella from the bid about the band shell on the green, town green. And she knows that I had said, I love to keep a New England green green, to have very little on it except green things. I would say I'm more open to considering it today. Um, but as it goes forward, we will always be thinking about what the impact will be on the people living around it, the institutions, the college, the church, and not just on um, the businesses, which is you know, her responsibility, right? Um, and we would think about some of the culture, but we don't have to run everything, we don't have to do everything, but we have to think about 
how the many new things that we're doing, we're doing so many new things, and new things are being done by private enterprises and developers. We just have to think about how do they affect the quality of life, the residential neighborhoods, and the history and culture of Amherst, which will keep us pretty busy. Pat. Yeah. Because this is a retreat, I feel like I can be a little different um, about how we're talking. There's. I, I will frame this by saying I would, Saturday I spent the day at Osborne Prison and, um, and on Sunday was in Boston, Cambridge actually, for an in, interhelp, um, which has to do with jo Joanna Macy's work. So those workshops were both um, very uh, impactful emotionally and stuff, so I'm kind of in a a space where when I hear the heart of Amherst, I get kind of nuggly, I get uncomfortable. Um, I know what you mean by preserving the history, the character, da da da, da. Um, But I also know uh, in the heart of, an Am of Amherst is an ongoing disregard for um, working class people, people of color, um, and those uh, um, those are things that we need to address when we talk about the heart of Amherst. Um, so when we're looking at impacts, we really need to look at the social impacts beyond, is it pretty? Is it, uh, you know, and uh, I don't know. So that's kind of one of my goals is for Amherst to directly begin to reflect on its real history as well as the history we like to say that we have and that we use and to be able to begin to move in new directions around housing, uh, community gardens, all kinds of things that would uh, affect transportation and food access and so on. Um, but I would like us to keep a, um, a broader social lens. Well, I'd like to just quickly respond that the historic district in which I live, the local historic district, um, acknowledges black, working class, Irish people. The, 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 the basis of the historical district wasn't that there were beautiful houses on Lincoln and Sunset, but that it was an integrated neighborhood um, and um, that represented a long-standing working class and black and uh, cultural um, community in the town. So I don't see, I, I understand what you're saying, Pat but I don't see that what I'm saying is in contradiction to what you're saying. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's a contradiction as much as a difference in what we want Amherst to be. Steve. Yeah, so uh, really good, really good starts. Um, so I see as maybe a bump, I was trying to look up what the term is, so bumpers in a bowling alley. So the ball on, in, the, in the lane, and um, not, to, not to do, <laughs> make sure it stays in the lane, make sure that, that um, because things will happen, things have happened for several hundred years without us, and they'll happen if the form of government changes again. So I, I think that our job is to, so for me, Amherst is synonymous with progressive, so, so, um, so that's to me that's the Amherstness that that Dorothy. So a place that's willing to experiment, a place that's willing to embrace, to be inclusive, and I, I think we, you know, we have a maybe an imperfect history that way. But I, I do think that that's the Amherstness. So, but I also so preserve is a hard one because preserve can all can mean you know go back to some some sort of a history that wasn't as inclusive. So, but I de definitely think there's physical parts of Amherst that need to be back to the new 1921. But at the same time, there's uh, putting up a structure that makes people do something that's inclusive. inclusive. But also we have to recognize that there's huge other factors like every enormous state-owned institution that's Yeah. 
very wealthy college, so I ought to get her some money. <laughs> <laughs> I hear what you're saying about being progressive, and I would love to claim that mantle for Amherst. But if we go to look at what the process has been and the response of neighbors to 133 Northampton Road, there's no way you can say that Amherst is progressive. We, we have, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna be reelected because I'm gonna be starting to talk about all of this stuff a lot. Um, <laughs> there's such a thing as white fragility, and so we don't like to be told um, that we're not progressive. Um, and uh, and I, I apologize because I'm not sure how all this fits in with this committee. And I will say that. And I think there are ways that we are tied together in our values about preservation of land and, and uh, buildings and, and the kinds of development that might happen. But I really want Amherst to begin to take a deeper look at itself. And I think we can help that at, in this committee. So before I recognize Andy, I want to say I think it does, and it will tie directly into our next item on the agenda. So I'm, I think it's perfect we're having this part of the conversation now. Andy. Yeah, I guess I'm a little bit confused uh, because we seem to be jumping ahead on how we do something as opposed to starting with what we do. And the what we do, I felt with all of our committees, is to inform the council, to assist the council to have decisions about issues. And uh, the, uh, we therefore shouldn't be necessarily injecting our views as the leading piece or um, not that they should not be included or guide what we do, but that we should know what it is that the council is looking for advice on to help it efficiently make decisions when it's meeting as a group of 13, how to inform it, how to give um, the range of options that might be considered the pros and cons of each option and possibly to make a recommendation, which then gets into the values, but that comes in at the end, not at the beginning. Um, so, you know, I would start with what is the purpose of our committees and what kinds of issues do we expect to be referred to us and how do we um, develop the research um, to help us to do the job of informing and possibly advising the council. As always, Andy is very informative. Um, does anyone have, or uh, let's start with the purpose of the CRC. You know, this, this topic of conversation is, is on the goals of CRC, which I think Andy distilled down to what is our reason for existing to help the council? Um, and so let, let's see if we can focus on that. Um, that of the couple of questions Andy proposed, the first one is the purpose of the committee. And so what should we be, wh what do we think we're created for to help the council? And then how could we do that? Thoughts, Dorothy? I mean, we've said this before. Um, where do, we all are different, we have different things that we value in different orders, but as a committee, we look at the impacts of possible actions, and hopefully from among us, we will cover most of the important bases. Um, and that fits in with what Andy is saying, that we talk over things. We don't have to agree as a committee. We just have to have looked into, thought of, and reacted to and said, okay, if we do this, then what happens that? And how does this impact that? So that's how, for example, in the discussion about uh, performance band shell today, I was thinking about parking, and I was thinking about, okay, a lot of people love to walk, and they'll love to walk from this new private parking garage we're gonna have, but I wouldn't. Um, I have a very bad knee, and I go places because I drive in my car. So I wanna make an arrangement with Amherst College 
to have access to some of their parking lots when we have an event in the band shell. And I want to make sure that we check with the church, Grace Church on the Green, on the Common, to make sure that they're not having a sacred music um, concert when we're going to somebody's going to schedule a rock band. Um, thinking about the lighting, what kind of lighting needs to be in the park. I was there for the um, Luminaria and the fire event, um, was it one or two nights ago? And it was very successful. But going down to the fire event, there were a huge number of people, but you couldn't see them. It was pitch black. And so we're kind of stumbling along in the dark. And I'm thinking, oh, this new redo we're going to do with the commons needs to have a really new great lighting system of, I hope, beautiful light lamps all around, but which are modern and can be controlled so you can turn off this, turn on that part to um, provide lighting where it's needed and not to have it you know, getting in the way of a fire performance, which the children adored, by the way. I couldn't see the children, but I could hear their crazy laughter um, every time he would do a, a mock fall. So we just have to think about and then take it out further, like in, into all the implications of what we do, and there's so many of them. So Dorothy talked about impacts. We look at the impacts of possible action. Is there a way we could quantify what, what, what type of impacts we look at? I know later on I have a list of them, but I think that's where sort of our conversation first started with Dorothy talking about um, a tradition, culture, history, Pat talking about um, moving in different directions, a broader social lens and all. Um, so is, is there a way we can quantify the subject matter of impacts? And should we be doing that? Dorothy? Well, I mean, one of the reasons that the bid is interested in this is because it, they will, it will help business. In our, um, what do we call it, our committee description, um, economic activity is mentioned. But if we're thinking about what Pat is thinking about, people from uh, many groups, um, it's free. We're talking about free activity in the center of town, uh, which is a positive in terms of it's very democratic. Um, so we kind of depending upon whatever our particular lens is at that moment, we have to kind of follow our ideas, our ideas through and see how it goes. And then somebody else might say, but I'm concerned about safety. And we have to think about that. So you would argue it's a fluid moving sort of target in a sense where it's not always the same subject matter of impacts. I like things fluid, yeah. Pat, you were about ready to speak. I agree that we need to study the impact of, of different things, but I, I think there needs to be a framework um, that in a certain sense that we go to each time and that has us look at the economic impact, the social impact, uh, the um, tr you know, impact on transportation or development or uh, economics. But my feeling is that that framework Within that framework, we need to bring in something that's unique for this issue, or uh, any particular issue. Um, and that is the way that I could step forward to fluidity um, as long as there's some skeleton. Uh, structure, to me, is pretty important. Oh, I, I'll agree with that. Um, I just don't like things to get too rigid. So if it says, well, it's not on the list, we can't talk about it. That's when I, I don't like that. But I think you're right, a structure, and we might say, well, this doesn't really apply here. But then we have to stop and think, say, and maybe it does. The other piece for me, since I'm spouting opinions left and right, um, is how do I bring neutrality to the investigation of the issues? When I look at impact, I can have an immediate reaction, but that doesn't make it true. Uh, and so how do we open up ourselves to um, um, make sure that we're not just responding from our own personal tastes, that likes, dislikes, et cetera. Um, and so that somehow or other it needs to be embedded in the structure as well. 
brings an interesting question. Do we need to be neutral to the issues? Thoughts? Well, I mean, the idea of a democracy and a freedom of speech is that if enough people say what they think, that somehow the truth is, comes out. Now, we're not sure if that, how that works right now, you know? I mean, this is something that we're all thinking about. But I just, the way, and I referred to this the other day, the, the, the thing that allows me to put up with the excessive demands on time of what we're undergoing with the council is that the people on the council are different and they're interesting, and I have the feeling, the hope, that between us coming at it with our own idiosyncratic and perhaps opinionated thoughts that we will come to the truth. That's my hope. I guess, a Andy. So I, I still want to turn us back to the committee charge as our, our leading point because I, um, I pulled it up after I spoke and then I realized that pretty much what I spoke of is earlier is our committee charge. We're not here to try and um, necessarily just create policies because right. we think they're right. Um, the charge was review and make recommendations to the town councils on matters regarding. And there is some of that in there, so I, I uh, but a lot of it, the rest of it has to do with referrals. And um, it also ties into very specific policies. Uh, so we do need to be very cautious about making sure that what we do in our vision of what this committee is about is consistent with the charge that we've been given and knowing that the charge might be modified and in some sense narrowed by um, subsequent council action. Um, the other thing I uh, will note is we were given a piece of paper by Meg Gage at the beginning, which I think most of us have seen before because it was a part of um, a committee that was established by town meeting and then uh, became the um, defunct. But it's interesting that proposed actions, options, and impacts number three really is covering a lot of the things that we've just have talked about. So that committee may have done our listing for us. No, and and it, it goes to um, what we'll get to next, which is the process for evaluating measures. Um, and and all on when we get there around 8:20 or 7:20 or so, I'll explain how we got that. Um, you know, but but yes. Yeah, so the goals back back to the goals. Pat wanted to discuss the potential modification of the charge. Does that modification necessarily change our goals if transportation is removed from our charge? Say, because that's one of the proposals. Um, does it change the goal of how we report something out versus just what we get referred? Mm -hmm. I've got to know it probably doesn't change the goal. So, so I, I'm going to try and summarize the conversation. I know we've got about 20 minutes left in this one, um, but so far what I'm hearing is one of the, or if I try to translate it into goals, um, one of the goals would be to try and report out on referrals or in when making these recommendations under our charge to report out comprehensive benefits, pros, cons, on impacts, whether those impacts are positive or negative, on something that isn't necessarily neutral, um, right. but isn't, isn't, you know, that sh isn't necessarily completely biased, you know, in, in that it, it tries to have that comprehensive discussion, but then the vote will be based on what our opinions are if we're making a recommendation um, and that we're going to bring all of that, but that recommendation would be based on trying to have a comprehensive discussion that reports on all the impacts we can find, whether or not we agree with those impacts. Is that sort of what I'm hearing as a potential goal of this committee for the reporting out? I'd like to clarify by neutrality, I'm not saying that we eliminate our opinions because I don't think we can do that. 
um, but what I think that we can do is place them to the side and look at what might be a value in, in a position that's different uh, than ours. And if there is real collaboration and thinking and talking going on in the committee, we may get to a very different place, which would impact positively the refer referrals that we make or the recommendations that we make. Any other thoughts? I am always, as chair, happy to move on if we are exhausted on one <laughs> avenue. I'm not gonna <laughs> take it for 20 extra minutes if we're ready to move on, but yes, Dorothy. And just a quick thing about transportation. When, with, if, the, with, if the new committee reorganization takes place, um, I still think that, say, in something like parking, as it affects residential neighborhoods, we would still have some concern we would still report on that. That would be one of the impacts we could talk about. But we wouldn't be in charge of, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be doing the part that is a town service, um, which is a more complicated thing to do with the money. I mean, I know, I, I was very shocked when I heard how much money we get from uh, parking costs per year. We make a lot of money, the town makes a lot of money. So I think if the committees are reorganized, something like Lincoln Avenue parking or even what we currently have in our committee, we have a string, Spring Street parking, we have some speed limits, none of that would be in front of our committee. That would all be in a different committee, so we wouldn't in this committee be talking about it. Although what we're doing tonight and potentially any sort of thoughts we have and all could be potentially forwarded to if there are other committees that are doing this type of deep dive into certain areas for it and say, we've come up with a, a framework that we think might be helpful for when you guys are evaluating things too. Steve. But parking as it relates to zoning, for example, would be part of this committee. So in other words, there would yes. be cases where parking. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, certainly so parking. It wouldn't be the sort of day-to-day -day operation of parking, it would be more sort of long-term embedded within land use laws. Any other discussion on this item of conversation, goals of the CRC? I, I like the way you said that, Mandy. I mean, we would report on what we thought was in our purview, and we would report what we thought were the impacts um, without us saying that this is really the most important thing, but we would just report on it. What this is facts or guesses about what would happen. But you also added that if we felt that some other thing that was not strictly in our purview was relevant, we could say it. So that leaves it open. We're not in charge of it, but we can make a comment if it's something that we have come across in our study of the issue. So we will move on as I note this down. Our next item on the agenda is a discussion for process for evaluating. So this sort of, um, actually evaluation of measures when making recommendations to town council, this sort of portended what the goals might be and then how do we get to that goal of making these recommendations because our charge says we have to make recommendations when things are referred to us. Um, and I have two sections under this, uh, which is identify underlying values of the council and community for inclusion and consideration, and then a discussion on the process for evaluating. Um, I have drafted a community impact report template um, that is part of the packet for tonight. Um, it was based off of the TMAC report that the council received a little over a year ago from the town meeting um, advisory committee, which um, as Andy referenced earlier, Meg Gage came in and actually distributed one portion of that report to us, which I will have Athena add into our packet. It has already been distributed to the council, so I felt okay with accepting it and saying, yes, put it in our packet, we've seen it already. Um, and it's what I based the draft off of, actually. So um, we can start with the community impact report template if we'd want, or we can start by trying to identify council values um, that we might want to. You know, we have in our council rules 
the very last page on the appendix that has a set of sort of values. Mm -hmm. Um, we could, I don't know whether we'd want to restate them or have that or whether we just want to move into a discussion on how would we evaluate measures. It might just be better to say everyone has different values, but we've adopted a set of values, a statement of values in our council rules. Maybe that's where we get our values, um, although those might not really go towards, th those values are more interacting with each other, I think, um, now that I think about it, instead of values for the town, say, built environment is, yeah. is you know, and, and how to evaluate things. Um, so, so let's start with, is there a way we could identify underlying values of the council and community for inclusion and consideration? Is it possible to do that in a manner that is comprehensive and not necessarily biased in any one direction? Do we think so? <laughs> yes, I, Pat. I was wondering if some, that, given that we have a master plan for aspects of town and that that feels to me to be a value statement of both council and commun uh, community uh, and whether, uh, and so that feels like a relevant document in terms of what are the goals, uh, one of them being sustainability. I don't think is in there. And that is when I think of housing, which I'm thinking of a lot of, I'm going to a lot of meetings and thinking about housing, that my goal is integrated housing, which means income levels, and it means um, students, older people, families, um, and some people, and total across the board, inclusionary zoning, some people of very low income and of, of moderate, like 50%, 60% um, average income, so that we're not putting all the poor people here and all the rich people here um, and all the students here. I mean, we have students amongst us, and we, it works very well when it's done properly, and it doesn't work well when it's not done properly. And there's been a lot of effort in town to create a situation where students can live amongst our neighborhoods um, in a way that's mutually supportive of students and the residents. So when listening to that, what I hear is potentially that each of us bring our own values. Um, I, I'm not saying I necessarily disagree with that as a value, but, but um, that we might, as elected officials, because of who our constituents are or what we ran on, bring our own values, and so we might not be able to identify a clear set of here's the values we would evaluate something on versus here's the topic because I think we can identify topic of housing. You know, how does it impact housing? However, each of us thinks about the value of housing, and the, value of and the value of social justice or sustainability or, yeah, or that value of, that you pointed out of integration, which inclusivity, is which is part of social justice versus someone else might have a completely different value on that. But it, it's also practical, <laughs> I, I mean. Remember that for <laughs> uh, uh, Pat, Pat, my stand has, I think, helped bring about some changes in the plan. I read through the whole plan. I see changes made in the uh, level of supervision and the hours of supervision and in the placement of the house, and um, I am not, up, I, I'm not opposed to it. But, so I feel my being, to me, hard-headed, which I was, I believe was a good course because I'm happier, much happier with the plan as proposed, but I do want to make sure that's what they do. I'm glad that you're happier, but I also think you're, well, no, we'll talk about that. that that's that means I don't thing. say yes to everything, that's okay? I mean, sometimes thing. I'm no, a bit no, of a fuss. Go there. Let's so right so that, so that's a specific an issue, um, <laughs> but it goes to can we actually identify underlying values of council and community, or do we just bring our own? Dorothy. Well, Pat mentioned sustainability. I think that that's 
very clearly in that is in the master plan and whether we strengthen it in the revision, I don't know, but that is a, something that we've all agreed that we share and that we think that many people in the town share that value. So it's not like the council goal necessarily. It's just us reflecting the people. Well, is, it, is it though a council goal? Um, because we did adopt climate action goals as a council. Does that then change how we as a committee identify impacts and benefits should we, you know, it goes to what documents are important later on, but is that part of the evaluation of this would um, further goals adopted by the council or this would not further goals? Should that be part of how we evaluate measures when the council itself has specifically adopted certain goals like climate action or when we finally get around to adopting a, the actual master plan versus it being just the planning board's document is that I mean you started Pat with the planning with the master plan of that seems like it could be a goal a, a, a council you know sort of value um, once it's adopted is that then does that help form the basis of our impact evaluation I've got Dave over here <laughs> nodding almost vigorously yeah. here. So <laughs> feel free to chime in. <laughs> I'm just thinking of, of the discussion we had last Wednesday about a housing policy for the council. So I would think that would fall right in line with this. If the council adopts a policy for housing overall in, in Amherst, then that would inform you, know, you in the same way as you evaluate all anything to do with housing. So, yeah, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. Well, I really, I'm kind of staring at what Mandy put together in terms of the, you know, clearly identify the purpose. I mean, I, I like structure, so I think with everything that's come at the CRC in, in year one, you know, I think we've all been longing for a little bit more structure in how to review these. So, you know, I, I really like the document, at least as a conversation starter, um, that you put together asking all of those questions and really kind of framing what is the purpose of CRC and, and if it is, which, which I think we all agree, as Andy said, to advise and, and make recommendations to the full council and having some sort of consistent way to review every proposal that, or every issue that comes to you. Andy is always very clear about when it's the finance committee has to look at something. So we're talking about sustainability and it's the topic of electric buses comes up, which turns out to be a complex topic. Um, and the Finance Committee is going to look at it in terms of the budget, but still all committees have to think of sustainability, but still they're going to look at it in terms of the budget. Um, we might look at it in terms of um, does it, how does it work in terms of delivering children to school or how, does it mean that we can only, can't buy enough buses or, you know, in terms of people and people's needs as well as being some concern for sustainability. And I don't know where we're going with the, the electric buses, but I've been reading some, there have been some things in the paper that made it sound as if it wasn't as easy as some people thought it was. Should we move on to that sort of second item under um, discuss the process for evaluating mm -hmm. um, or evaluation of measures? The second item is discussion of a process for evaluation. So as I said, I drafted a community impact report template based sort of on the TMAC one for the purposes of those that are in our audience if they have not been able to find um, where we put documents. If you go to amherstma.gov slash town council and then find our committee name, Community Resources Committee, on the sidebar on the right there will be a packet link and that link will have these documents in there. Um, and the one we are going to pull up now is entitled Community Impact Report Template um, so that you can look at it while we're discussing it. Um, and so I have no particular, feel free to tear it apart mainly is what I'm going to say. Um, but, but I, since joining this committee, 
in my own brain was having some difficulty thinking about how do I evaluate something like Spring Street parking <laughs> in a way, like how do I go to look at it and, and, and figure out what those impacts might be. And so I went back to that TMAC template and framework and said, maybe I can do something with that. And so this is sort of what I came up with. Um, before I published it here, I actually sent it out to Dorothy for some comments as vice chair of this committee. Um, and so it's kind of been modified a little bit with that, but, but let's have a discussion on whether we think this Are you talking item. about this document? Yes, yeah, okay. that document, right. Pat. There is, not document there is not a new one, no, no. no. It, it was you. revised and reported on by Dorothy a while ago. Okay. So, um, you know, the, the one that Pat just showed me, but let's start with, in reading this, did committee members think this might be a way to frame discussions and look at matters? Is this something worth pers pursuing, in other words, or should we scrap it and think about something else? I thought it was worth scrapping and thought. Then Mike, hopefully. Mike, Mike. You covered up your mic sign. <laughs> <laughs> um, I felt like it was well designed and that um, and really workable. And. It, Steve, do you have something? Yeah. Oh. I, I have a question on yes. B, which is uh, like the discovery portion, where we have to find out do we have enough information, and if we don't, where do we get it? And um, it looks like that's a lot of work, and we don't have any staff to speak of. I mean, I mean, we, well, we do, we do. But do you, can we come to you all the time? Okay. <laughs> They're taking an early evening Dave, because of that, Dorothy. <laughs> do, you, do, you know what I, do you know what I mean by staff? Staff means somebody I can say, would you please do this for me? No. I, we don't do that with you guys. We can't. No, I mean, I can't keep up with the work connected to this job and committee at home because there's things when you have absolutely no staff and you go every place yourself and try to find all the documents and read all the documents and then remember what you read, that's a lot. And then we go to 20 hours of meeting a week. Well, every other week. <laughs> Only 20? <laughs> um, Dave and then Steve. No, so I think, yeah, we have to be realistic. But it is, honestly, part of my job as your staff liaison to try to bring you resources, bring you people within reason to answer your questions or come and come to your meetings, whether it be you know, the chief of police, the fire chief, um, planners, uh, developers, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, I think within reason, that is what we can try to do. And, and I think that's why I do kind of favor a structure, as Mandy has kind of outlined here, to kind of keep it because we have to be realistic. How how far afield can we go with our inquiries? And, and I think you'll reach kind of a a comfort zone on whether, you know, whether it's, you know, Archipelago coming in to talk about parking on Spring Street or speed limits or a CPA proposal. Um, so um, that is part of our job and, and we'll do the best we can to bring you those resources. Steve. So a couple of things. So one is the Planning Board, Zoning Board of Appeals, when they do site plan review, special permit, they have a checklist not unlike this, which is required. To then, you know, to get a response, and some of it becomes some of it's incredibly important. And some, like, we did a tennis court resurfacing that had to get a site plan review, and it, then it becomes sort of ridiculous, right? So, because of course the tennis court should be resurfaced, but still we have to go through. So there has to be an expedited review, and we actually then yeah. we started an expedited yeah. review that we believe that this meets the intent of the. So, so I think. That's Great that it's like when we get to zoning bylaws and we get to some, you know, what if we're going to do an individual one thirty two request, that one should be a really great structure. Um, I would also one of my favorite read is a book called How People Form, how we decide or how people decide or something is, and it has to do 
with, with exactly this. How do, how do people make decisions? And an example given is that of cupcakes. So you, if you, anyone know, you know, anyone know this? So, no. <laughs> so there was some study where people were asked to evaluate cupcakes. And everyone felt totally confident in saying, this is my favorite, this is my second, third, fourth, fifth. But then there was a checklist that said, <laughs> that um, uh, rank each we, um, cupcake for its texture, rank each for its flavor, rank each for its aesthetics, rank each for its length, all the, and so they did that, and then they are again asked to rank the flavor cupcakes in the order completely separately. Mm -hmm. And it's not because they weren't, it's not because they were making a better decision, but because they lost confidence in their original ability to make a decision. So yeah. that's, I, I love uh, orderly decision making, but I think that we also, at some point we also have to trust our instincts. I think what you're saying is really important. Yeah. Go ahead, Dean. So did you mean that their original, um, what's that word, blink um, decision was in fact better than when they had the checklist? Yeah, so it's part of the whole book. It's not by the, you know, it's not a book by Gladwell, but I'm sure it's on the bookstore right next to Gladwell. Uh, Jonathan Lehrer, who had some problems with plagiarism or something like that, but but still, this this study is a good study. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to give you the other one, uh, Atul, Atul, Atul Gawande, and he's got a really good article on the medical checklist. You know, and it's really hard asking a surgeon to do a goddamn checklist, but when they don't, then there's a glove that's forgotten and diseases get transmitted. So we're not surgeons here, but, and we do trust our instincts. But Pat says, right, that we should kind of move it a little bit more towards the checklist. So I think we can kind of do both, okay? So, Steve. So that's sort of a task. That's a task kind of a checklist, you know, like a pilots. Pilots have to, you know, no matter how experiences, However, you want your pilot to be, or your brain surgeon to have enough, you know, self-knowledge and knowledge of the field to be able to make a decision without the task checklist when, when it's really important. So you have to do both because you're right. My brother was a pilot and he fired and got fired anybody who did not do the complete checklist before they went up in the air. Um, and there's also, you wrote, you're supposed to go rub your hand over your plane and, and you supervise the washing of it so that you can see anything that's there. And my analogy is, why does a mother have to babe, give a baby a bath a lot? It's not that they're that dirty. Uh, the skin actually does fine. But you do it so the mother, in fact, does inspect that baby and co covers the whole thing with her hands and she checks them out. So I think we do need a checklist, but we do need the knowledge that that pilot has through all those thousands of years of, of uh, hours of flying and we have to be able to trust that too. So I am for checklist and our own lived experience. So we've got sort of something like that here is what I would say. Um, why don't we go through the main parts of this? Because part A was clearly identify the purpose of the committee's review. Um, Can we take an example? Well, uh, so yes. Make up something, not oh, I was going to do something we've already done. Okay. Like we, we had the downtown parking working group priority recommendations referred to us, and I'm taking that because we're done with it, and the council's already acted on that. So if we screwed it up, well, it does, it's not going to come back to us anyway, right? right. <laughs> so. We had that referred to us, and I think we actually somewhat struggled with what are we supposed to do with this. Right. Um, and so, I, you know, if we had had something like this to start with, the first thing I think we would have done, initially I think we brought people in to talk about those priority recommendations, but I think the first thing we would have done was try to identify what we were supposed to do with them. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what that identification would look like, but 
would that, would say step A, clearly identify the purpose of a CRC review, have helped us in that instance focus our questions to the people we brought in, um, our discussion, all of that. Is this a good sort of part of a review to have? I remember you said that so many times, you said, what are we supposed to do with this? Um, and since we were new, we didn't know. But yeah, that is the question, right? What, what are people expecting us to do? And how are we supposed to do it? What is the finished product supposed to be? And so we ended up just making a few recommendations. I don't remember what we did, in fact, anymore. We ended up writing a memo that said incorporated into the town manager's goals. But, yeah, Pat. Uh, I was wondering if, um, you know, the finance committee has very specific area that it looks at, and this and CRC is broader. But I'm wondering if, is there a process like that of determining what you're trying to decide about an issue, Andy? Well, the finance committee is looking to inform the council about the financial impact of something that is proposed um, and try and be as objective as we possibly can in providing that information. So that's sort of step one. And then um, sort of step two, which I think is um, important but not um, as essential, it is if we have a recommendation to explain the recommend, to make the recommendation explain why, but it really needs to tie into the first, which is if the council doesn't have the basic knowledge of the um, financial consequences um, of doing or not doing a proposed appropriation, um, then it, it, it can't assess um, whether it likes the recommendation or agrees with the recommendation. So um, I, I try very hard to keep us out of additional things in like housing, for example, um, to um, our report, which I need to get back to in, uh, now the final draft, but it's, you've pretty much seen the draft already. Um, really gets into what the potential costs are of various approaches and makes a couple suggestions that come out of that understanding. But then things like um, the type of housing, some of the things that Dorothy's just mentioned earlier this evening, um, we included some of that because it did have some relevance, but it wasn't the major purpose, and I tried not to make it the major purpose yeah. of what we did. I'll add something here. In our discussion of the Centennial Water Plant, we Finance Committee looked at the financial implications. It's very expensive. But then we did, I believe we did this anyway, um, went outside that and said, but in terms of our uh, goals of, of self-sufficiency and sustainability, although this is very expensive and we could, we could certainly, many places might not do it. They might not you know, do that. And they would just say, well, we'll just get by. We decided not to do that, even though it's very expensive, because it was felt it was safer in the long run for the, the town. So we never just do one thing. We always have to think of what is the lens of our particular committee and that we're trying to do, but what are some of the overall values that we need to recommend to the town? Andy. Yeah, I mean, it's a good example uh, because what was happening, what we realized was that if we didn't fund the Centennial Plant Rehabilitation, that we were gonna have to shut down that watershed and cut off one of three major sources of water for the town. And that if our goal was to assure that there was an adequate supply of quality water um, as circumstances changed either in growth of the town 
or demand on water supply in other ways or environmental aspects that might cut down on the water that comes from, came from the other two sources that we needed to do that. So we recognized that there was a cost to not doing it. It wasn't a um, quantifiable cost in the same way that you could cost out how much it was to um, replace the old Centennial water treatment plant with a new one, but um, it was a cost and there was a values piece in there too because I think that uh, we recognized that um, having an adequate supply of quality water was something that the town um, valued and it didn't want and the desire not to get into a drought crisis situation, which Dave and I are only too familiar with, uh, uh, is, was not something that we necessarily thought was good, but at least we put all of that out there for the council so that the council could understand that there was a consequence of not doing it. And there was, it was this partly a values piece then because of the way I just described it. Thank you. <laughs> I think what I'm hearing, Andy, is that your purpose, the committee knew what the purpose was. And yet there was the ability of the committee to reflect on the value of clean water, et cetera. That, so you still did your job, but you went further because of a natural sort of um, consequence of not doing. So the doing and not doing was, was still in the frame of the, of what you were trying to study, but um, I don't know. It, well, let, let me try to rephrase that. Yeah, so I think, I think what you're, you're trying, my, uh, you know, feel free to correct me. I think what you're trying to get at is um, that the committee took that you know, finance has a much easier what is the purpose of the review and you can start with that without necessarily having to figure out why it's in front of your committee. Um, so A, on this document, A is a lot easier to determine sometimes than it is in this committee. Um, but then once you did that and you were discussing the impacts, um, you went beyond, you took, you discussed the financial impacts to the town and all, but then you said, What's the impact if we say this financial burden is too much? And you went and said that impact is something else and that kind of went beyond say the specifics and the nature of the finance charge. But one reason it may have done that and finance might have felt okay doing it in that instance is it was not sitting in front of any other committee. So that was no. the only committee reviewing that whereas housing might this housing priorities policy might have been a lot harder because of we know it's sitting in two committees and right. you don't want to duplicate the work. I, I, I like the phrase, which I'm sure other people have heard, but I hadn't heard it in this context, the, a values piece. I like that phrase. So that we discover what our purpose, we figure out what our, or agree upon what our purpose is and that we see what we need to know and that we try to answer and we try to go through a checklist to make sure that we don't leave something on some rug not lifted up or some you know thing not looked at, but that we understand that there are times when we go beyond the list to a, a values piece. And I think, I think that would, I'd be fine and happy with that. Andy. We did, and we did start earlier talking about values and uh, we made a list in the way List was uh, values are incorporated in the master plan. They're incorporated in our own appendix A to the council rules, um, and uh, they're incorporated in some of the policies we've adopted, such as the climate action plan was the one that was given. I thought of several others. Um, so there. There are various places that I think that we know to look for what 
our, what the values are that something is being measured against, because in the end, the proposal is made to do or not do something, and uh, the impact comes against, uh, is being measured against something, and we kind of did a good job of, I think, identifying to the extent we could where to look for those values. So let's move on to B, because I think given this discussion, we actually believe we need A. Mm -hmm. At least some of the time, we need to be able to clearly identify because yes. sometimes we struggle with what does the council actually want for us from us. And so B was one of the things that I think, I don't know, Dorothy, maybe Steve, pointed out as, oh, this could be really hard or how would this one be accomplished? Um, which is identification of stakeholders information needed in prior recommendations. So this is where maybe we identify all those documents that might provide us those values, um, you know, to get ourselves up there. But you know, if it came from a committee like the Housing Trust, what did they do? What did they complete? What were their recommendations? Um, if it came from the planning board, let's make sure we have their report in front of us. Um, and what questions did they have, you know, and all of that. The second one under this is, do we need or want information or recommendations from other town associated people or committees? Um, you know, if it's a zoning proposal on, I don't know, if it's, or, or this percent for art bylaw or something, if it's something from the Public Art Commission on art, well, do we want something from the trust because it might relate to housing? Or do we want something from the planning board because it relates to the master plan? Or, you know, that, that's sort of what I was thinking with was number two. And then number three is, and so if that's the case, if we want that information, well, maybe they considered it already. Or do we want something from TAC? It hasn't been to TAC, do we want something from TAC? If they considered it already, let's try and get that information before we talk about it. Um, if they haven't, maybe we send it off to them and say, hey, can you look at this before we talk about it? You know, but, but we can talk about, is that simultaneous, is it not? How do we make those decisions? And then the third one is, do we even have a clue about what we're discussing? Or do we need help figuring out, right. uh, getting a little more expertise or knowledge so that we can have a discussion about impacts and all? That's sort of where number three is for me. <laughs> Yeah. So there's not always a staff person or a department. Right. Or yeah. Yeah. Andy. Mm -hmm. it strikes me that there might be a four uh, or one or whatever it is, but you really need to know whether uh, town meeting is the prior legislative body or the select board is the prior administrative body has expressed an opinion or adopted any policy regarding that um, issue that is before us uh, because we should be informed by past action. Well, that, that has been most of the process for me this year is in <coughs> conversation with people, I find out there was a report, there was a decision, and you know it's all new to me trying to find it, and it's uh, it's it's a, it's a, there's a lot of stuff out there. So how would we, and and yeah, we part of later in this meeting is trying to identify as much as we can of things that have potentially been done, um, but how would we go about any suggestions on figuring out how to identify a prior town meeting action? or whether it's important to identify, say, a prior town meeting action. Town meeting has existed for 200, it existed for 200 or so years. Um, going to the extreme, does something town meeting enacted in 1885, is that extreme? You know, that's that's a oh, real yeah. extreme, but but yeah. maybe not, right? Um, if it relates to the common and their really desires for what, say, the town common looks like, it it may or may not impact our decision, right? Mm -hmm. At at how far back is it logical 
to go. To go, number one. Um, right now, during the impeachment, they're going back to Alexander Hamilton. Right. <laughs> um, you know, or is it really just relying on our staff's memory and our own counselors' memories? We've got some committee members here that have been involved for decades um, in town that have a very good memory. I think it's really important, uh, like Steve, your background and your work on planning and zoning, uh, Andy and Alyssa on select board, et cetera. But I also think that we need to, um, you know, I've had meetings um, where Lynn and I met with Connie Kruger, or you've done that mm -hmm. also, and got some of the history. So it, I don't think we should just rely on on those three in, in, the, in, this, in very specific instances. Um, but I think that what I do appreciate is when I hear the history, but we also have to remember that because it's history doesn't mean that's what should be recommended, but should be looked at and built from in one direction or another. You mean, mean you wouldn't be swayed by the fact that buggies were parked on the common in 1885? <laughs> nah, because she won't <laughs> let electric vehicles park there. <laughs> So I, I learned these things only by accident, and people tell me, and it's always like, oh, wow, that's really exciting. And there's no way to go to a place on the website, the town page, and say town meeting, and then Google a topic and find out what's it, what, I mean, you know, like, like you do, like today I was searching up a topic that was very dear to me, Sunnyside Gardens, found there's a lot of good stuff with a lot of big holes on, on the internet right there. But we can't search town meeting as far as I know. And some of the people who tell me about things in town meeting are not very young. And it's really hitting me that, do we have that history? Is it written down? Is it accessible? Dave. It is written down. <laughs> it is written down, and you can search the website. And it's actually a pretty good search engine. So if I were to, <clears throat> if I were to search, you know, um, funding for some project that I worked on in 2004, I probably could find the town meeting action that was taken to either thumbs up or thumbs down, you know, authorization for funding or whatever it might be. It's not perfect, but it's a pretty good search engine. Do we know how far back the online records go? How far have we been digitized? I, I know we have them back as far as they go, but the, the, the oldest ones are in handwritten scans, and so those are more difficult to search, but they are available. Yeah. Yeah, the, anni the annual reports are on there, but uh, before they were produced in electronic format, they only exist because they were scanned and entered as scanned documents, and they make for fascinating reading, and sometimes if you know approximately when something happened, you can go and look for it and read it, but it is uh, not always easy to know and uh, which year's annual report you should be looking at and where in the annual reports. But uh, you just really have to be playing with it for a while to find out. Um, you know, I was just doing it uh, in the last couple of days because I was trying to um, find out about when, when we got onto the INET and the history of the INET, since we're going to be asked to appropriate money to replace the INET. And I found, of course, very useful is what you, you know, what's, what, what keywords you use. So town meeting results will cut through a lot of other things because, of course, there's the warrant, then there's all the committee reports that go into town meeting. And you know, really, if you want to cut to the chase and see was, that project funded, you know, the, a school project or a, a capital project going to those results, a CPA project. You know, did we ever fund X? You know, have we ever funded a, you know, what was the first um, ball uh, field project that we funded with CPA dollars? I think I know that one, and I think it might be Plum Brook, which Andy and some other folks will remember was a little bit controversial back in 2005 or six, somewhere in there, four, five, six, so. So I want to take us back to the question that Dorothy sort of brought up at the beginning was, how do we get 
the information. If we come up and are referred a topic, and I'll put out there a housing priorities plan or a housing plan, because that may be referred to us in a week or so. I don't know if anyone on this committee feels confident enough that they know enough about housing to be able to be drafting a plan. So how do we get the information that we need and some of the basic knowledge we need to do that when, as Dorothy put it, there really isn't a lot of staff support for individual counselors? Um, and how much do we need? Or do we just start drafting stuff and then ship it off to <laughs> random committees? <laughs> what are people's thoughts? So, Dorothy. So maybe we could, you know, putting our heads together, draft something, and then we give it to Dave, who would give it to planning or various departments and get us some official feedback, or they would come in to speak to particular aspects of it. Before we get ready to pass it on to town council, um, hopefully they would have more knowledge of what we're looking for. Is, is that a fair statement? Um, I might reverse the order on that a little bit. My preference would be to have staff come in and do a little presentation and then have you do a Q&A to inform, help inform your discussion moving forward of, you know, for instance, on housing. We've got the housing production plan. We've got the housing market study. We have the master plan. So, you know, to have staff come in and maybe give you an overview of where we've been, where we are, and where we might go, and then I've found, you know, bringing in Rob Mora, Chris Brestrup, Nate Malloy, Chief Livingstone to be very helpful to you all. And I think it would be more effective than individual meetings. You all are meeting out, um, as are many department heads, but getting them here so the five of you can, can pepper them with questions. And I think, frankly, you know, we're very open to that and, and receptive to that. So we'd rather, we, staff, I find, want to share information with the council. Um, they're very proud of the work they're doing, whether it's a grant we just got or a program we're working on or whatever it might be with committee A, B, or C. Um, so I, I might front load that, then you all develop your draft plan, and then we could send it out through, you know, if, it, if you wanted the housing trust to comment back on it, if it was a housing uh, project or the planning director or the building commissioner, um, something like that. Um, yeah. And then I think likely once it reached the full council, then you would have public comment. Well, of course, people could come to your meeting at this, at this stage, mm -hmm. at this level, and then they could also come to the council meeting, uh, whether there would be a full public hearing on something like that, or, or it might just be a public meeting where, where the full council accepts uh, comment. So uh, I think we'd welcome something like that. And again, we don't, there's so many resources to tap from. I, I don't want you to think you you need to reinvent the wheel on these. Things. I think there's some really good framework to pull from. So that's my, my thoughts. Well, I would say that that sounds good, but I would like us to first meet and think of, get our kind of a real brainstorming session, and we would give you topics or things that we were thinking about so that you could uh, maybe target the um, what your staff says to us. Because we haven't really done that, and I think that would be, that's something I would talk about a retreat, I'd, but I'd like to go do it in a more comfortable place, maybe. But um, talk that, about what do we think we would like to have as part of this thing, and then send it to you, and then they would say, oh yeah, well we did this, or no, that wouldn't work, or whatever it was. And they would come and give us some stuff, and then we'd go back and talk about it some more, come up with something then. That would be fine, kind of more of an iterative process, but even if you spent that early session, as you said, um, Dorothy, brainstorming, but then came up with a list of questions. I think, you know, um, the CPAC does that quite routinely for applicants, and it's very helpful to, to know what the committee, what, what are their questions? What are their outstanding, you know, questions about Project A or B? Uh, you know, what are their issues on moving forward with this project or that? So knowing where the five of you are, and you'll, on housing, I imagine they'll range from you know, what can the university do to help with, with student housing to 
how do we get more over 55 housing, affordable over 55 units in Amherst, mm -hmm. and everything in between? So. so from the chair's point of view, what I'm hearing is if something's referred to us, maybe the first meeting is to work on identifying what our purpose is and then doing portions of B, you know, making sure we've gotten all the reports from whatever committees have already heard it, mm -hmm. um, trying to identify what other people may have information that might be in written form to bring that in. And then um, also at that meeting talking about what we might also want or what questions we have and once we've identified what our purpose is before staff might come in to answer those questions to have a mini conversation first and then at a second meeting would be when the staff could come in mm -hmm. to have that question instead of trying to do that at a first meeting. Mm -hmm. is, is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Them more, more, they, have, they know so much, there's so much to say. Gives them a way to pick and choose what they're going to say. After we can give them a report of, well, here's where our questions mm -hmm. lay and all. So let's talk about C, since I've got an idea on B. C was the discussion, essentially. How do we frame our discussion um, that, that in finance, Andy talked about, is identifying the impacts on the finances of the town. Um, in here, we're the community resources committee, so we're kind of set with identifying a whole lot of stuff. So I had two sort of options as ways to assess stuff. Um, so I'd like people's thoughts on whether two options are necessary. Um, and I put them both in there because I could <coughs> see potentially where one Option A, which I used what I heard from the people who sat on the town manager goals ad hoc committee, the smart method for town manager goals, could potentially be the way to start a discussion or manage a discussion on, say, if we had been referred to climate action goals. Something that is non-specific, non, you know, um, a, a, a overarching, say, policy versus a specific bylaw proposal. Mm -hmm. You know, they might require completely different evaluation methods. Right. Um, I don't know whether I got them right, <laughs> number one, um, whether this is the way to go about them, but, but are there potentially more evaluation methods out there? Does this cover what people see as potentially the main ways we might need to evaluate stuff based on what we've already had referred to us or can suspect we might get referred to us? I definitely see a difference in the SMART method and the impact benefit and drawbacks. Um, so I like the idea of having two. Not articulate, but. <laughs> <laughs> Answers the question. <laughs> Other thoughts? I Andy. think that they both, they both serve a purpose, yeah. but somewhat of a different purpose because when you, if you start with number two and you come up with what are the impacts, benefits, and drawbacks, uh, some of that gets incorporated into the values that are there uh, because it, it, I, I suppose the, the fact that it's not um, achievable or realistic mm -hmm. or relevant um, is a drawback. Um, but the idea of measurability is important mm -hmm. too because how do you assess anything if you don't know what your measures are? Yeah. Um, so I, I would tend to leave them both in and the committee as it looks at various kinds of assignments um, that it has been asked to look into may have to choose the method or blend of, or elements of each method that are most appropriate for the um, 
particular assignment, and so I don't. The, the discussion and um, identification of impacts, benefits, drawbacks, and proposed measures is the right discussion, and everything that's under it in one and two really are options that should be considered each time, but that we need to assure that the committee understands uh, what is being assigned to it uh, the purpose for the review, the information needed, and then gets into that discussion of what the potential benefits, costs, impacts are. They're, they're yes. not all equal. We can look at all of them, but they're not all equal. Something's going right. to be more important than others. Which gets into a recommendation in a sense that you've identified them all and then I'm voting this way and recommending this way because these are so much more important than that one in my mind or something. Um, so under the 1B, the impacts, I, I think the SMART method, the specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, or relevant, time-bound, or time-oriented are fairly specific um, in terms of you know, what they're asking. The B, the impacts, benefits, drawbacks, um, that I used, I added a couple. The one I specifically wanted to highlight, but I'd love to hear thoughts on all of these options, um, is the financial one that I added in, because we do have a finance committee, but one of the reasons I put it in here is a recognition that maybe not everything that gets referred to us also goes to finance. Mm -hmm. um, and or even if it does go to finance, it might still be appropriate for us mm -hmm. to at least acknowledge what some of those impacts may be. Um, and so I'd like to hear people's thoughts specifically on that sort of subcategory of impacts, um, but certainly on all of the subcategories. Are some of these appropriate, inappropriate? unable to be determined, you know, <laughs> too broad, too specific, all, all that sort of thoughts. I, I think it's, it's a grab bag, and I think you look through it, and you see what sticks, and you, you know, you follow it up and make sure you have some thought on it. But we don't have to fill in a dot in every grid. You know, it doesn't have to be that um, rigid, I don't think. And then not everything ha has, has these impacts, but I mean, I think it's, it's, it's always useful because when I'm trying to do something, um, I don't do it right away. And as I go around doing the other things I'm doing, one by one, things pop up. Oh, I got to do this. Oh, I got to do that. And it takes a long time to think of all the things that you have to look at when you're doing something. So this, this saves a lot of time, I think. Other thoughts? Andy, do you have a thought on the inclusion of the financial section? Well, I think the financial is part of everything, and it's, um, as I was saying in the Finance Committee, we recognize that sometimes it's easier to find cost than the value of uh, paying that cost. And uh, so when we get into the Centennial Plant, we could talk, as I said, we could very easily figure out how much it costs to build it. What we couldn't figure out is how do you put a dollar value on the question of diminishing the amount of the water that's available to the town and uh, whether there's a, a, an easy measure to put in there. The housing one is actually even a better one because we can assess from prior experience the amount that we've invested uh, to save certain kinds or to develop certain kinds of units, whether it was preservation of existing or creation of new, um, but there's a values element that is the other side of it, and I think that's why it was referred to two committees, because the values judgment really had to come from this committee. So do you think it's worth leaving the financial item on this document 
given that we do have a finance committee, is there a, a good purpose in keeping it here? Or is it sort of overreaching for this committee? I don't think it's overreaching. Um, I think that one of the, um, whenever membership on this committee um, is set up, there really does need to be finance committee member on it, um, I think, um, because we, we do want to look at the costs of things. And um, having some way of reflecting on that instead of waiting for another committee's report to us, I think would be valuable. But I also feel uh, it's like Andy saying, what if the finance committee had not thought about the value of clean water and access to water? What if they just went with the uh, costs? Then we would be looking at the lifetime value is longevity in the people who are drinking clean water or whatever. I don't know. So I think it should be there. Water one was a little bit easier. The housing one, I think, is a little more difficult because, in the end, um, it was referred to two committees, and I think it was referred to two committees for a reason. And it was a recognition that there were housing policy pieces of what was being proposed that needed to be considered along with the cost of accomplishing them and the two fit together, and in the end, I always come back to the point that we don't make policy in committees, the council makes policy. Mm -hmm. We can recommend policy, but we can't establish policy. I, I would just say I think that's a, that housing one is potentially a good example. I'm not sure this committee <clears throat> was prepared to go into as much detail as the finance committee went into in terms of what that cost would look like versus just a recognition and maybe that's where that referral difference is appropriate. This committee could certainly recognize that's a lot of money. <laughs> that accomplishing these would be a lot of money and maybe if the committee recognizes that and it hasn't been referred to finance, part of that financial analysis is, oh, we're realizing this would have a huge impact if adopted, maybe we need to send this off to finance if the right. council already hasn't for a more in-depth analysis. I would perhaps change some of the wording in number seven. It's a little bit too specific financy sounding. Um, maybe say um, relevant financial, something vague. I think keep the word finance because I think that we would do that but it's sounding like, like real expense cost to town or residents. Well, we might not know the details, but it could be relevant expense cost or you know, something not as if we're gonna have the numbers. We're not gonna, we don't create the numbers. We don't go collect the numbers, I don't think. But we can say there, there may be a problem here or this is something that has to be looked at or that the council has to think about or, or as you said, the finance committee needs to deal with. So it would not be potential revenue changes, but effect of potential revenue changes. You know, how do these things affect the people? So maybe find a way to change that wording um, to recognize sort of a big picture cost instead of the small picture cost. Um, and then potential recommendations on whether more in-depth is needed on that. Right, because somebody else might come and find this and say, what is this doing there? You know, so, we, and we don't really want to get into a big discussion. We know what we mean, that there are some financial implications which might be appropriate for CRC to look into or at least to talk to people about. But we're not in charge of this. Steve. Yeah, I think it's critical to leave it in. and. Financial could simply be adopting a report by another committee, by the finance committee. That's true. 
Let's move to number two in this section, the policies, goals, and regulations that might help guide recommendation given our prior discussion tonight. Maybe that's in the wrong section. <laughs> but but I, I, we touched on a lot of it in up, up in sort of B. Maybe B is the appropriate spot to do that identification instead of after we've had a discussion under C, which is the discussion of the impacts and benefits. Maybe before we even get to that discussion, it's appropriate to identify what policies the town has adopted right. that frame yeah. that impacts yeah. and all. Um, I can tell you when I was drafting this, I probably had it in both sections multiple times um, and was trying to figure out, well, well, the consideration, I guess, as I was drafting it was when do you, when do you peg those impacts to the policies? Is it at the time you're discussing the impacts or is it once you've identified the impacts and are trying to make that recommendation on do we support passage or not of this policy or this bylaw, is it at that time that you peg the, that, I think that's what I was struggling yeah. with yeah. is at what time do you say yes or no, this measure is recommended for passage or not at what time do you say because it doesn't support that goal? Or it, I, it's why I probably struggled, yeah. but I, where do people think number two should be? The <laughs> purpose, you know, I think I did it as identify policies or goals that the recommendation should consider and all. So maybe it does belong up in B. B. <laughs> no, so I've needed clarification on this. I have somewhere amongst my piles of papers many of the reports that are on um, this other piece of paper that have been done. But what I don't know is who passed it, when they passed it, is this still a policy of the town? Because I started reading the, reading the housing production plan and right away I came across stuff I said, what? And I don't think we think this way or believe that way now. I don't think it's necessarily quite what the master plan said, though it might relate to it. So just because the fact that there was a report done at a certain date, adopted by somebody, or group, does that mean that that, uh, it doesn't mean that that's a policy we have to follow, does it? Well, Andy? it's guidance because it is established policy, but the council is now the governing body. Right. And so if the council believes that a policy that has been previously adopted is, does not um, continue to make sense, um, it's certainly always um, able to make a change. That's why we were elected. Can I also add that um, there are policies and then there are simply reports mm -hmm. and there are plans. So something like the housing production plan is not necessarily, in my mind, a policy. It is a document that was created in time, and at that time, we we believed what was articulated in the, not everybody, I'm sure there was disagreement, but um, at that time, the research was done, uh, consultants came in, and, and assessments were done, and so at that time, goals might have been articulated in the housing production plan or any other plan that we have. For instance, the open space and recreation plan, <coughs> it may, I wouldn't call it a policy document. I would call it a guidance document for the town relative to our open space and recreation goals. So um, we refer back to it, for instance, with the CPA proposal right now for uh, further work on a multi-purpose field at the, at the high school and community field. We would refer back to the open space and recreation plan to say, well, was that identified in that plan or was, was the need for more quality fields identified in that plan? My answer would be yes, even though that plan was last updated, I think, in 2017, so it's fairly fresh. So I think it's important to identify time it was completed or adopted or approved by the relative um, you know, committee or board. That is information which I, I don't think well, maybe it's not, I'd like it on the cover, on the top sheet with the title, uh, but it's very interesting to have. Um, was it commissioned by people? Who voted for it? What was the date? 
so that we know if this is just this is because I like we, I like to read what people thought and did, but I want to know how much weight we have to give it. So if, if you could identify the documents a little bit more background on that. So I do want to point out, at least as it relates to the document we've been discussing, the impact report template, um, or whatever I call this, um, one of the things as part of identifying those policies, goals, regulations is also identifying their applicability, which I think goes directly to, well, how long ago was it? Is that something the council is still seeking to sort of aim for or not? Um, but yeah, so we'll, let's talk more about that when we get to identifying documents that are relevant to CRC's work, um, because I think it goes directly to that attempt there. Um, the last thing, if I don't hear any more about this. I, I, I just want to quickly say, and it's probably not important, but I'm looking, I can see why you kept moving it around to the top to the bottom, <laughs> because it, it's, it's the bridge statement. Um, yeah. Identifying your policies and goals and documents, blah, blah, blah. That clearly goes into C. But this discussing the applicability and whether the proposal furthers or fails to further compliance, um, that's part of C, discussing and identifying the impact. I mean, we're, is this document applicable could also happen in C. You know, is it so old that, you know, um, or it's so new that it doesn't matter. But whether the proposal within these policies and bylaws further or mm -hmm. further the uh, or in or fails to further compliance with. Um, so I think that is somehow or other a bridge. So maybe it needs to be in both. In in B and then in C. Okay. Yeah, it's just some yeah, sort of split where where B gets yeah. identify yeah. It's, it's the documents the bridge, and 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 that the recommendation should consider and then to keep in this sort of section the yeah, yeah. you know discuss yeah, their applicability or or right, even because, you know and whether they this because yeah. I can say hey you know we need to look at the 2017 uh, fire study fire staffing study and it's uh, applicable yeah. and here's you know has information in it but if I go back and see those um, 1947 one maybe that doesn't have much applicability it might be saying the same thing given that we're animals but <laughs> right yeah okay D is the vote this is sort of the f the recognizing the final step we've in a identified what we were supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. So D to me would directly go back to A yeah. and vote on what that mm -hmm. um, purpose of the review is, if it's to make recommendations versus is it just to identify impacts without making recommendations? Did they really just want a general survey or something? So right. D sort of finishes the process and would be the last sort of um, step in before we send it back to the Council, um, and then that's where we would get to. You know, it says here um, why the vote's the way it is. You know, here's everything, but why did people, in taking all of that, get to yes or get to no? Mm -hmm. What were of these thirty things we identified? Which right. one spoke the most to people? Right. Um, to take it to, as I'm writing the report for this coming council meeting on the percent for art, we identified a couple of negatives. We identified a bunch of positives, but the negative that spoke most to, say, your vote, Pat, was that impact on taxes. Mm -hmm. Not, well, it might be overbroad, which is one I identified. You know, It was really that impact on taxes. And yeah. one of the things that spoke most to me on my vote was, yes, it has that impact, but we can ignore it because we can vote it out, so yeah, I'm OK. You know, but but it's identifying. Way to get out of the issue. <laughs> <laughs> but but identifying of these thirty things we talked about, here's the three that right. really impacted how we got to our recommendation. Um, sort of pointing out the right the, those specific ones. Um, I would yeah. simplify the phrasing just a little. Sure. Um, so that it was to make a formal recommendation to the council, uh, some some little phrase as to how the council should act. 
or to, inf to inf uh, as using, I think, Andy's phrase, to inform or to guide the council in there. It's because we're talking to the council because the council's gonna take a vote and gonna do something, right? We're not just, the whole purpose of our doing this recommendation of the council is because the council is going to take it into consideration and the council's gonna vote. In theory. There's potentially a time where they might refer something to us. Okay, then council take action, vote. how's yeah. that? So, take so action. I, I did it to guide the council in its actions. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I know that we know that's what we're talking about, but yeah. I had to read this sentence a couple of times to no, that's just fine. parse the phrases. Any other thoughts on this document? Given the discussion, it sounds like it might be something we want to potentially try to adopt or acknowledge as here's sort of a process for dealing with referrals. So I will come back with changes, maybe potentially even at our next meeting for another discussion um, and potential vote um, on a process, if that sounds good to people. Yeah, sure. Does it? Um, yep, Pat. Um, I think it would be uh, wise <laughs> um, to in, to talk to when we present this to council, talk about the relationship to the community impact framework. Mm -hmm. That because I, we're trying to bridge this divide that exists in county, and if we're saying this document helped us create this document, we're not going to have the residents on it that they want, but. I don't, we don't, we don't need to say that part. I'm just trying to think of how can we begin to think when we report about bridging the, mm -hmm. but I wonder if that's my word of the night, I hope not. So yeah, so I don't necessarily intend as chair unless this committee asks differently to put it up for a council vote because I see it as a process of the committee. Yeah. Um, but yeah. certainly as OCA has done with their internal process. They presented something to the committee and said, we've done this. I can certainly present this in a report and say, hey, we had our retreat. This is what we discussed. At the next meeting, we hope to potentially adopt this as one of our processes for evaluating referrals. Um, and this document started out, the basis of this document started out from the TMAC Community Impact yeah. Report Framework. Um, so I can do it that way. If the committee thinks there's another way I should do it, I'm certainly happy, but, but I did not necessarily intend this to go to the council for a vote. Um, no, no, but, no, but certainly, a, policy, yeah. Yes, I agree. Okay. But in terms of reporting it, so that that. Okay, so discuss the, um, the value or the, the, I'll come up with the wording there. Yeah. The, the TMAC proposal and it's okay. And if we can find the places across, uh, if mm -hmm. the council can find the places where you are uh, acknowledging some of the ways that we're incorporating yep. uh, different opinions or perspectives, I think that'd be wise. Sounds good. Sounds like we're ready to move on. We are right on time. Do people Yay. want a break? We're about two hours in. Do people want a break? We'll take a five minute break. I'm gonna pause the video. Um, so we are on to uh, our 820 item, which is collaboration with town committees. And the first item is identify the town committees for likely collaboration as it relates to our charge. And then the second item is a potential discussion on what that collaboration should look like. And that discussion might be too much for tonight, but I threw it in there. Um, we've already sort of started that with how to collaborate on a master plan. Um, but let's start first with I created sort of a list of committees. I took this from the committee list that the ad hoc rules of procedure group created for terms of liaisons, and then I deleted a whole bunch from that list. Um, that were I, I deleted anything that was not 
a town committee of say. So all of the regional things, the, the PVTA type committees, um, I deleted and I think that's a lot of, and then all of the council committees, our own committees, the, the you know, our CRC committee was on the list, or you know, finance was on the list, I deleted those. Um, and I was left with then a list of 41 committees, which is kind of scary. Um, so what we can do, I think the way to do this is to just start at the top. They are in al they're, not, they're in alphabetical order per how the appointing authority is. Um, so not complete alphabetical order. And maybe what we can do is just start at the top and say, yes, that one might relate to our charge. And, and as we're doing this, maybe we should identify current charge or, or potential future charge. Like I'd make an identification that says, if this TSO and transportation is set out, that one no longer necessarily, that one might go to, might not relate to, um, us for likely collaboration. So does that sound like a, a good I plan for how to go through this list of 41 committees? Sure. Uh, sure. Oh, and I apologize, I'm, I should have looked this up already. What's the difference, what is the Amherst Redevelopment Authorities? Like I know what the Housing Authority does, but what is the Redevelopment Authority? They I just met with them. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know a tremendous amount about the ARA, but their, I think their statutory power comes through state law, and essentially they have the authority to work with any municipality um, on redevelopment of blighted land. So essentially land within the town or city needs to be deemed blighted and they can, they have quite a bit of power. I believe they have the power to buy land, take land by eminent domain. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, they were part many, many years ago, predates me working for the town, on uh, the development garage. of the garage over yeah. near Banks. So. There are certain areas of town that I've owned, and take, Steve may know take. this. Certain there are areas of town, and Steve might know the answer, where they gain the power to make decisions on what is done with that piece of land, whether it is developed or acquired um, for other purposes, used for purposes. Um, and the, my recollection is also in the parking garage. So I think most recently they were involved in the Gateway project, the area down Phillips and Fearing. And I think that there, there was a study to see whether or not that could be declared to be blighted. And I believe that the study came up short, so it didn't meet whatever the standard was. So, so they're really almost on call. They don't have, oh. like sometimes they don't meet. For a year or more. Yeah, yeah. Is it right to, to assume their way through that process? Thank you. Oh, and I guess this, I, I never fixed this town committee list. They are no longer elected, they are town manager appointed. The redevelopment authority. The, they used to be elected, the charter changed their, from elected to appointed by the town manager. Um, part, potentially, well, partially because they rarely do meet because we don't have a lot of blighted land in town um, that qualifies for things they can do. Um, so let's start with the housing authority. And I guess I would actually like more explanation on the scope of the housing authority. I know they are in charge of Section 8 vouchers, sort of in town in a sense, and they sort of have a board or oversee the executive director that deals with the Ann Whalen apartments, but do they really deal with any policy? Like housing yeah, policy in town, the Pomeroy Lane. Lane. In, in, in general, my experience, and Andy can can chime in here. In general, they're not involved in the town's housing policy. I mean, they're a separate entity. Mm -hmm. They oversee units of affordable housing in town, and um, 
you know, um, for instance, one of their members is actually a representative to the CPAC. We fund them, they are eligible for CDBG funds, for CPAC funds. We've, we've funded a number of renovation projects at housing authority properties, but they're not active in the same way on policy and the development of new units like the Affordable Housing Trust is. So they have their own executive director, their own staff, and they do not, the executive director nor the staff report to the town manager. Okay. Is that Michael Kirchner? He's on that. He's on the board. Yeah. Yeah. Andy? Yeah, I mean, housing authority property is property that's built for uh, benefit of low income, elderly, disabled people. There, we've identified certain properties that are in town. I think that basically they own and manage property. And they have a um, management and maintenance staff. They establish rules for their properties. There was a controversy several years ago about the question of uh, banning smoking um, in properties and sort of the um, interests of the individual tenant to be able to use their apartment for, as they deem appropriate and the larger interest of the neighbors, uh, or I shouldn't say larger, the interest of the neighbors and how that balanced out and, you know, the policy decisions that they make, mm -hmm. as does any landlord. And then they, as uh, Randy indicated, they, the whole thing with, uh, they have a certain number of assigned Section 8 certificates that they manage, and uh, they have to have a policy to do that. There have been various times when they've served other functions um, I believe that several of the inclusionary zoning um, apart um, apartments where landlords do not have experience of selecting low-income people for inclusion in um, affordable housing that they have uh, those developers, presidential apartments, Barry Roberts, have entered into contracts with the housing authority to make those manage, help them make those management decisions. Okay. So, yep. Um, was that, did they, did they pay for that or did the town pay for that? Who's the they? The built developers, because. I think no, the developers The developers, probably, okay. the developers paid for that service. It's a, basically for them to run the, the state mandated lottery. So and, the developers and they do that with Belchertown, too. Belchertown's yeah. contracted yeah. with them now. Because part of me thinks that maybe if we want to encourage inclusionary zoning, if they didn't have to pay for it, but if the town said, listen, we're just, this is what one of the things we're going to do to help you do inclusionary zoning, we will do this at, at no cost to you. Dave. I don't know how specific, I don't know how deep we're going into a, yeah, a I very would, brief I would, answer that's a question. before we move on. Yeah, yeah I would not, I would not go there right now. for another now. day, because yeah. I think complex we issue. might have some different opinions on. <coughs> when we're talking about yeah. affordable housing, yeah. potentially later on a housing policy. Yeah, I think the question is, that. is that cost a barrier for developers to do it? And I think that's a discussion we should have at some point. So let's say we're going to go through this list, the first one on the list I have is Amherst Housing Authority. Do we think that someone, given our charge, that we might need to collaborate with, given what they do and what we're charged with? I heard one, probably not. I guess uh, I have a slightly different view, but still it comes into the probably not. <laughs> it, it's, it, but my point is, is that it's a judgment call you make on a case-by-case -case yeah. basis. Yeah. On this particular issue, are there any committees off the list that might be helpful? Mm -hmm. um, I could conceive, because we're talking about inclusionary zoning, that you might want to talk to them about their experience in managing. And then, yes, you are collaborating with them. But uh, 
you know, it doesn't mean that it's likely to happen, but I don't want to say no. Right. So it's one we should keep in mind, at least. Yeah, yeah that's why I was wondering, uh, except for the possibility of knocking something off the list because we can't conceive that we would ever consider that we would, an issue <laughs> that would relate to them, aren't we really just identifying a list of committees that we always want to look at mm -hmm. to see if there's anybody yeah. there? So, so that's why I thought it could potentially be a quick run through of, are there some that there really aren't much of a possibility of consulting because of what they do or they're totally out of our charge, things like that. Um, so redevelopment authority, given what we've heard they do. If there's a read, yeah. If we say which one can we kick out, yep. it gets. Okay, so I'll, I'll read through the list and, yeah, but that's what we're gonna do. The school committee, the school committee. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to guess what we'd see, but housing and and zoning and stuff is some of yeah, the Yeah, so I don't see us dealing with public buildings that much, right. like the fire station, the school, the library. However, the library, the school, the fire station may require a zoning change or a zoning tweak or, or so, but I would not say that the school committee or the school project is really our purview. So we're, we're in general kicking out the school committee from this list and the trustees, library trustees. Ditto. Ditto. The Dorsey. library is a major place for the homeless. Uh, the library, uh, Austin gives a really strong speech about the library as the most democratic place in town. Um, I, you know, I don't want to kick it off the list. Okay. Planning board is a yes. Zoning board. Because their their primary job is the planning board has both a quasi judicial and a planning side. So we really collaborate with them on the planning side. The zoning board doesn't have the planning, so all they do is render judgments basically. So I would say no for them. So even with a zoning change, you wouldn't think. Zoning, they the might planning board consults the with the zoning board of appeals. Okay. But I don't so think that needs to be our job. Report. In fact, okay. it becomes awkward if we're. Okay. Okay. Any disagreement with that at this point? I, I'm is, seeing. Is the some zoning potential. subcommittee listed on here? Yeah. It, that's part of the planning board. Yeah. So yeah. I won't kick it off the list and delete it from the list. I will not. I think they're No, I'm not sure they all are. Give me a second. <laughs> Get the one that you wanted. Um, so, so then we've got participatory budgeting and rank choice voting. At this point, I'm not sure either of what they're doing will come to us at all. So those are two, I would say, can go off the list. Because I think they would go to GOL or if this committee splits, they would end up in town services. <laughs> so I'm, I'm kicking those off the list. The Affordable Housing Trust is definitely a yes, I would say. Yeah. The Ag Commission. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we've got the Recreation Working Group. Yeah. Um, Board of Assessors. Yeah. See, there are some, Andy. <laughs> Everyone yelled out it. Okay, it doesn't, it's, it's not really in existence anymore? Okay. Okay, even if funding is provided for things, it's not really gonna go through them? Okay. Andy? So you want an overboard of assessors might fit in when you, <laughs> if you're getting around saying mixed use development and how is mixed use development taxed, mm -hmm. who are you gonna ask? You're gonna ask yeah. the board of assessors. That's, true, that's right. why I think that the game of removing um, unlikely. Yeah, I think boards are gonna ask this question. 
might ask either. Uh, it's, it's a fair point, but I'm just not sure what we're gaining by this exercise. That's why. Well, I, I guess there's 42 on here, and yeah. and I. Well, well, 41 on here. Sorry, there's 41, and and I think it's it to me. I think it's helpful to hear what people think about how we might be able to use them, because that gives us a framework as we go through the f prior framework we just said we'd like to consider to think about what committees might be useful to us. So this new committee, is it gonna take health and aging or do we keep them? TSO. TSO, I think she's talking about. Yeah. Let's not go there right now. Yeah. So Board of Health, was, was she was getting to that question. Deal with uh, especially uh, with housing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. They deal with housing. They deal with things like uh, marijuana policy. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, Board of License Commissioners. Um, yeah. CDBG Advisory Committee. There, they. Uh, this is when I have a question for Dave. They are the ones that evaluate grants for the CDBG money we get. Do they have any policy? making stuff that we might, as we're forming policy, seek to consult their, you know, like we've talked about with assessors, well, if we're dealing with something, we might have a question on assessment. I think the only thing that resembles a policy would be similar to what CPAC has done is come up with a guiding document for um, evaluating proposals. And they're really, their goal is their advisory to the town manager. So they make recommendations to the town manager on CDBG projects, both social service and capital. And we don't, as a town council, ever have any say in that money being spent because it really is truly just a town manager determination, right? Mm -hmm. So mean, unlike CPA, when they make a recommendation, that has to come to the council so we might right. see them. Your say, I think, would be in the town manager's goals to say, you know, we, we support, you know, we support you know, the, the programs that you and your staff uh, develop and oversee that, that are um, supportive of the following social service goals or okay. something like that. The CPAC, we've already had stuff from them. Mm -hmm. CONCOM, Council on Aging. Yeah, Council on Aging. I think it's a possibility. It's a possibility, yeah. Um, Yeah, I don't, I don't understand exactly what the Council on Aging does separate from the senior center. They age. <laughs> they age. Um, Council on Aging is a sta statutorily required body in every town. And uh, it advises, I think, on policies on how to provide assistance that's mm -hmm. in programs that are needed for um, aging and has oversight responsibility for the senior center. So they could potentially be useful as we're looking, it, if we look at end up looking at parking and parking removal and location mm -hmm. removal and stuff on how that might affect seniors. Um, well, they've definitely had an interest because they talk frequently about uh, people being able to park Correct. or yeah. using the senior center yeah. and elders being able to have sufficiently accessible parking just generally. Yep. And, so. and the new sidewalk repair yeah. that's supposed to that's go through. True. So I would delete the Cultural Council. It is a state agency that gives out money from the state on request by nonprofits and, and all. That's all what it state. does, yes. Um, they do nothing else. Um, DRB certainly is something I think, and DAAC, um, the Dog Park Task Force. That's pretty much finished. I think so. They're building right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> almost. You're in the middle of winter. <laughs> DPW Fire Station Advisory Committee. Didn't that dissolve? I don't know. I think that dissolved. We could ask Lynn. She would know. I think Lynn said they dissolved. She was on it. I wasn't sure, but I know that they were in suspension because they couldn't do anything more until, until 
um, the yeah. TPW site location was resolved. So then there's the ECAC, which we would keep on. What's the Hampshire Regional Emergency Planning Committee? That's a body <laughs> that um, Tim Nelson, our fire chief, is a lead member to. There used to be a select board member to it. It might have been Slaughter, but um, they try and have develop emergency plans that are coordinated across towns. So probably not something we would need to discuss yeah. anything with, uh, seeing that it's regional. Probably, if anything ever comes up under how the town is going to respond to critical emergencies, it's going to fall under that new committee. Mm -hmm. Historical Commission, Human Rights Commission, mm -hmm. Local Historic District Commission, LSSE Commission, we still have recreation in our charge. Is the Marijuana Internal Working Group and Town Review Team still in existence, Dave? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. If we end up re renew reviewing um, bylaws on marijuana, if they ever get changed, and that would come to us, if it comes to us, that would certainly be how we would interact with them. Um, months and Memorial Building Trustees. Does our charge, we don't really deal with the buildings themselves, right? No, that's, that's just a town-owned building right. that has, has their own that's trustees. required to have their own trustees by some of the historic documents that went yeah. with it, and they have to do with management policies for the part that's not the library. Yeah. They meet like once a year. So personnel board, public art commission, public shade tree committee. Yeah. Probably, I don't know, with our charge? Probably no. Oh, no. It doesn't seem like it. It doesn't something. seem like it something. Andy, can you think of anything that might need to go to them with our charge? I put it in the very unlikely there category. <laughs> they can go on a separate tab. Public Art Commission, Public Shade Tree Committee. Yeah. I think the Shade Tree Committee, we, given some of the stuff we're reviewing, could come in handy. Yeah. Recycling. Yeah. Recycling and Refuse Management Committee, does that still exist? It's gone. The, uh, just so everybody's aware, the home pickup, if you contract for pickup at home, is actually regulated by the Board of Health. Okay. And um, the regulations are under the Board of Health. The Refuse and Recycling <coughs> Management Committee is sort of um, a policy committee that was uh, looking at what we could do to have more sustainable trash policies and recommend them to the Board of Health and um, more directly to provide advice regarding the uh, transfer station. Okay. Registrar of Voters, I don't believe, falls under our purview at all. That's more a GOL thing. The sister cities? The sister cities? I can't imagine. One of them is defunct anyway. Right, La Paz is. La Paz Centro dissolved. They did, did they? They did formally dissolve. Okay. Oh yeah, we approved the select board and okay. request from them to dissolve last in May, like that this last summer. Okay. TAC. Yes. yes. Uh, Water Supply Protection Committee. I can that entirely was, yeah. see that. And Wayfinding Internal Working Group. Is it? In, is it? It's not really in existence anymore. We've got Dave to, to consult on wayfinding anyway. So, <laughs> okay, so that helps when, I'm, when we're framing questions. That will give us a shorter list at least. 
Um, so I appreciate that. Um, collaboration looks like was also part of this discussion. Um, I, I think we might not need to have an extensive discussion at this time because it sounds like from what we've discussed previously that all of that would look specific to whatever we're considering. Um, so it might not be something we can create a sort of standard template for what collaboration looks like. It, does that, s is that agreeable and sound logical to committee members? Yeah. Which brings us to our ways to increase responsibilities within the CRC discussion. So I added this into the agenda um, based on a couple things. Um, we at the council meeting in early January had a nice discussion about responsibilities of president, vice president, um, and all, and ways to sort of increase leadership responsibilities or leadership um, development. And then I heard, and so that was one of the things I, I, reasons I put this in here, but then I also heard from Andy that in finance, Andy is not the only person that writes the reports. And as chair of this committee, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> as ways to decrease the chair's work. So, so this went in here not only to increase the responsibilities of others, but as a, hey, maybe I can diminish my own workload. <laughs> let, let, let's be clear though. Uh, the chair of the finance committee writes most of the reports <laughs> and has to make sure that they all get written. <laughs> So there's no escape. <laughs> but, but still, so, so there was a twofold reason for putting this in here that I'm just going to be upfront about. Um, but I would, I would, seriously, I would like to hear from this committee. Um, you know, we have a vice chair sitting over here, Dorothy, um, that I will wholeheartedly admit I have problems figuring out on a committee like this how to best use you as vice chair. Um, um, I have a suggestion. Um, I am very happy with um, who are organizing our agendas and going through them, and I'm happy with the fact that you seem rather quick to be able to write your reports. I mean, you, 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 you turn them out uh, at a faster rate, say, than I can with my schedule. But I will step up and offer to be of more help in uh, working on or writing or helping write a housing policy with you, okay? I don't know if that's... I think you probably wanted more than that, but I think that's the best I can offer. I, I will just point out, I'm not looking for just what you can offer. Um, we just went through a wonderful conversation about the use of a community impact report template. And if that's how we're going to use for a discussion, in theory, that's also potentially how we could produce our reports. Mm -hmm. um, with that as a template for the report, mm -hmm. too. and. And one of the things is in thinking about this agenda item was instead of creating sort of a report from all of my notes, maybe as we go through the discussion, one of us can be assigned on this referral, you're gonna take the notes for that report and put it into that template. Um, you know, and so A was figure out what our responsibility is. You know, and so once we decide that, someone can be assigned to put that under A, the committee decided this was what we needed to determine. Um, and then with all the impacts and benefits, um, that's one idea I had, and that could maybe rotate around to different people on the committee, not always fall to me, not always necessarily fall to the vice chair. I fully appreciate, and I think at some point if housing is referred to us, someone's going to have to draft that initial policy, right? <laughs> um, and, and so I appreciate the offer of help with that. Um, but are there, you know, does that sound like a potential possibility where we could spread that creation of that template and report from that template around? Are there other ways we could spread work? Are there other, would people, right now when I create an agenda, I kind of go through, see what's been referred, send it off to Dave to make sure he can get the right people <laughs> to the meeting <laughs> before I post it. Uh, there was talk in the council meeting of people really wanting to be in an agenda setting meeting. Is that something people would like to sort of be involved in with a CRC meeting where 
instead of it just me sending it to Dave, me sending it to Dave and randomly each month someone else on this committee, you know, I'm just throwing out potential ideas here, like what might people think about in terms of, or dis desire in terms of, you know, increased responsibilities, but increased leadership opportunities, increased involvement in all of this? Or do they not care? I, I <laughs> do not need to be on an agenda setting um, committee. I don't have that much time for an extra meeting, and I figure if I really thought, felt something should be on it, I would email you. Okay. And I don't worry about you thinking, oh, she won't let me put it on, or anything like that. <laughs> um, so that's not something that, that I need. Somebody else might enjoy doing that. I'm not sure I would enjoy doing it. But um, I feel like the since I'm relatively inexperienced at all of this, um, that it would be helpful for me and I um, to learn, to, to be in sitting there talking with you even maybe before it got sent to Dave or talking with Dave afterwards and what do you think and what are, you know. Um, and I would like to see it move around because, you know, all the committee is going to change over time uh, and especially if we have a, a split of responsibilities and create a second committee then I think the more experiences we each have, the better we will be. So I would be willing to do that. I would be willing to take part of a report. Level. You know, mm -hmm. I think that that's important. I would go with that. Curious to know what Steve thinks. Rotating agenda setting it seems reasonable. Dave, I was just thinking. <clears throat> Every agenda has, you know, the agenda on one page and then the supplemental page, which has um, items that have been referred, uh, items that have been tabled, et cetera, et cetera. And I wonder, at the end of a meeting, might it be helpful to do kind of a, I don't know if it's a five-minute preview from the chair, you know, what I'm thinking, you know, as I look at the next agenda, I'm thinking X. You know, th yeah, then I'm going to, and then there might be five minutes where they could give you input, not get into detail because, you know, that that discussion shouldn't happen in that meeting, but more, you know, Mandy, you're thinking, well, uh, you know, I'm looking at what the council needs coming back, you know, two meetings from now, and we need to address this, this topic and that topic mm -hmm. before. And then maybe that gives everybody a chance to kind of get inside your head and say, and somebody might go, well, is there any chance of sneaking this on the agenda? And it would obviate the need for either extra emails or extra meetings, as, as yeah. Dorothy was thinking. Yeah. Might have been too many emails. <laughs> <laughs> or even more emails flying around, necessarily. Yep. So what I want to say something on, I, that sounds reasonable. I, I like you knowing that you are focusing really, really strong on what CRC is doing. I have my own intellectual agenda on the council, like different areas of, that I'm really concerned about. I've got about four or five of them. And that's my focus. You know, I mean, I'm doing this, I'm following this issue, I'm trying to have influence on that thing. And so I, I don't want to get my brain too confused. I like the fact that I know you are totally focused on CRC. Mm -hmm. So, um, and many of the things I'm doing are all CRC related topics. So. Do you have any thoughts on any of this, Andy? As a fellow chair of a committee on how to sort of distribute responsibility roles, workload? It's a hard one because I find a lot of times it's sort of individual discussions that happen either outside of a meeting. Can you help with mm -hmm. more than anything? I, th I like Dave's suggestion of saying uh, having sort of a last piece to the agenda, even if it's only just a couple of minutes of agenda preview, and uh, at least it's clear, and if it's not to be discussed at the meeting, 
it, gives, it invites people to call or send an email if they're upset, if there's not time. Frequently we're squeezed at the time because right. there's another committee seeking to take the room. Yeah. Any other thoughts? If you got any, I'm welcome to suggestions. I'm totally open to them. So don't, it probably will not show up on another agenda, <laughs> but feel free to, if you come up with anything, mention it to me. Um, Cause you know, I, I am very much open to figuring out a way to use committees as leadership development paths. Right. So I, I will agree that doing suggestions for agenda setting um, is better than us rotating mm -hmm. because then we're all active and involved in groups. But I'm wondering, I still would like to see um, some of us uh, when we can take on access to the reporting, learning how to do that. Um, I think that would be valuable on the multiple levels. Okay. I will work on that. Um, that brings us to, unless there's anything else on that topic, it brings us to documents helpful to our work. So I attempted to create a document and then I posted that one and then I figured out some more search terms for the <laughs> website. I used the search on the website and just started searching for random things. And so I got a lot more um, that I have not posted besides what's on there. I'll, I'll go through some of those, but um, this was not necessarily an attempt to say these are the ones that we need to discuss. This was my attempt to try and come up with what I could find. Most of these I've never even read, so I have no idea how relevant they may even be. Um, so, but it was more of an attempt to sort of start that discussion of what might, we've obviously mentioned some, some documents, um, but many of us have no clue exactly how much is out there. And as Dorothy was saying, whether they're even relevant, you know, and, but, but it would give us, a, I thought it might give us a start. Um, and so housing and homelessness, and then I tried to sort of break it into these, these sets of topics are from the charge. Um, that's, that's how I got the topics, was pooling them from our charge. So if people were wondering, housing, and, and that's sort of the way they were listed in the charge, I think, I don't know, um, no priority order. Um, but in housing and homelessness, from searching the committee, the town's website, I found the housing production plan. I did not write the year on that. I'm not sure it's whether it's because I didn't come up with it or whether I just didn't look for it. Um, the draft policy, priorities policy that we've been dealing with, which I didn't bother to find a link for. Um, and the housing market study, again, I don't have a, quite have the, the date, um, the year for that, but I, I tried to put years in when I could find them. Um, does Dave, do you know of anything else, besides the master plan, which obviously deals with housing, but I only put that under planning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you, it, it pretty much covers the whole set, right? It's an overarching document. Do you know of, does anyone else know of any other housing or homelessness policies, plans, documents that might be helpful that the town has implemented or is, you know, come up with in the past? Yeah, so in the packet, it was documents relevant to CRC charge areas. And I tried to get the links to them on the web page listed too, which may come in very helpful to our town, our clerk of the council some other time for other website issues. <laughs> but there's a town policies page. I don't know whether this is helpful for that or not, but. But off the top of your head at this point for housing and homelessness, we as a group don't know of any others. I know there is the, the CPA committee has a, mm -hmm. a priority statement, I think, on that page. They, yes. they worked on that quite a bit and they're doing over the priority principle and trying to get that done. So that might be a good one to add. 
So, if no one else has any others, Steve, you can't think of any others from planning or anything? Well, uh, just the university, I was looking to see if the university hung down. Mm. So, uh, oh, well, yeah, yeah, UTAC, yeah. that's and true. Do you think to look at something like the virtual quality? Do they check the co-location? Yeah. It's and something I can't locate it right now. Okay. But um, there may be one or two more documents. No, certainly send them on. I I intend this sort of as this sort of not necessarily comprehensive, but a list we can always refer to when ho something housing comes to us. Hey, have we checked with this document or that one? Um, okay, so UTAC might have something. Yeah. So we'll have to look at UTAC too, and Dave will look. Public ways and public resources. Okay. At least I know what to look for then to get the link. Public ways and public resources. This is one that I added a whole bunch of stuff to, um, but I'll go through what I added. So downtown parking map. Um, the downtown parking study from the just this year, the transportation plan was from 2015. There is a watershed management plan, which went into public resources, not necessarily public ways. Um, the ones I was adding, the complete streets policy from 2018, I do not know whether it was formally adopted. I think it was formally adopted by some sort of committee. Um, there is a street lights policy from 2001 there are parking permit regulations from 2005. There are parking regulations, I think, that are different than the permit regulations. And I will put up a modified document, Pat. Um, oh, okay. So don't worry. <laughs> um, I just, I didn't want to add a second one in and confuse people. Um, I will send one out. Um, public shade tree regulations from 2018 and the DPW policy for approval of major transportation or roadway projects from 2010. <laughs> I found it, like I said, I, I, I was like plans, policies, I would just randomly do search and I was like, if you page through enough pages in those search results, you get some interesting things. <laughs> if you go to like result number 80. <laughs> but, but could you find out whether they were officially approved or whether they're just there for our thoughts. So the DPW, so, so it depends on what you mean by officially approved, right? Um, that so we the have council, to follow it now, maybe. So the council only in theory has to follow council policies and then obviously bylaws, laws, the charter laws, stuff like that. But the town staff in their daily operations are kind of following many of these plans, right? The water manage, watershed management plan, mm -hmm. CONCOM is certainly complying with. And so it, it depends on what you mean by who has to follow what, I think. And that's a hard question to really answer. For example, if we put forward something that was the opposite or different from something in one of these plans, are we opening ourselves to be yelled at in a council meeting because we're going against official town policy? Well, we as counselor, the Try council, to avoid that. The council is the chief policy setter of the town, so what we said is kind of what the town policy is if we've adopted it, but that doesn't mean we're not opening ourselves up to being yelled at. <laughs> so, I mean, if people don't like what we said, they're still going to yell at us. <laughs> so, um, can anyone, particularly Dave, think of any glaring omissions from this? or any that I've cited that might not really, town staff or departments might not be following anymore? Well, I guess there was a lot of planning. Okay. Um, Since I named like six that aren't on that list too. And by, by June, you will have a new layout in the town, and it will be developed through the MDP 
Right. Thank you. That, that means we should probably put the climate action goals on this list somewhere. Uh, so, so planning and zoning, the master plan from 2010, the inclusionary zoning feasibility review from 2014, flood mapping, flood maps, we're getting new ones presented to the council on Monday, I think. Um, so that will actually be 2020 eventually. There's the open development and it just works on the least official economic development plan hmm. I don't have one even in community and economic development. There's a study that was done by the Santa Valley Planning Commission yeah. hmm. with state funds that we received through the governor's the, the okay. Okay, yeah. Yep. So flood maps, open space and recreation plan, community field master plan from this year, that's from the downtown field recreation group, I think. Mm -hmm. um, climate action plan from 2000, which will be supplemented by one this year. Um, the climate action goals I just added. And then there's trail regulations. That I don't know whether it's your department, Dave, or Conservation Commission, or there were a whole bunch of regulations. Down at the bottom, I've, in this new document, there's a whole bunch of health department regulations and a whole bunch of inspectional services regulations and conservation rules and regulations that I've added into this list. Right, I don't know if you have right. Watershed rules, wetlands rules, puffers pond rules, conservation areas. So all of them, when you get a new document, a lot of that. And, and we might have to sort some of this. I was amazed at how much exists, believe it or not, as I went through this. Community and economic development. Dave just mentioned an economic development plan. Um, Andy mentioned the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission study. Do you know? Last year, the year before? No, that's kind of one of the same. Oh, they were the same? Okay. Um, I also threw in the open space and recreation plan, community found master plan, and Amherst preservation. Oh, the Amherst Pres from the planning section, the Amherst preservation plan from 2005, and there is a fuel efficient vehicles policy from 2011. DPW policy yeah. for approval yeah. of major transportation or yeah. roadway projects? <laughs> I mean, I have 2018. Did it ever get voted on? Can't recall. I have a link to it in the new one, so the link probably indicates it. Maybe if you update the team, you can send it to me. Yeah, I'll, I'll send it out to everyone. To yeah, I'll send it out to everyone. It's, it's yeah. many of them have links. Um, preservation plan from fuel, and then arts and culture. Public art, art installations by private Before developers. We go on oh, to yep. Pat. I'm just wondering if the bid has ever put out any kind of report mm. or anything that, any kind of formal. Okay. Andy? They probably have a lot of internal documents, but we have to remember it's an independent body. Right, no, I understand that. But right. 
so they might sometimes independent bodies put out like public reports. And yeah, they, they might have something like an annual report or something, but I've yeah. never delved into it. So arts and culture, I came up with public art installations by private developers, which was proposed, but I do not believe was actually adopted by the Public Arts Commission. Um, I think it dealt with installations on public land by private artists or something, I don't know. Um, that was the only one I could come up with <coughs> that I found. Like I said, I did random searches on the town website. Um, and then I, could, I didn't know of any for the relationship between town and institutions of higher learning. Maybe others can think. I mean, there's obviously the strategic partnership agreements as we get through those, but that's not necessarily policies yeah, versus. Was it done, was it done in practice? That is, for, wasn't there for the North Pleasant Corridor between UMass and. I was going to ask whether we should put the UMass, the Amherst College, and the Hampshire College master plans. Amher Amherst, 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 Amherst College has a master plan. They, they just put a new one out this year. So they have a brand new one. So the UMass one? The Amherst College one. Um, Beach and Pleasant Trees policy was adopted by the select board. Okay, thank you. Oh yes, in 2018. Yep. Amherst is a unique community was the first start of it. <laughs> Do we know if, well, does Hampshire College have a master plan? I'd like to make a request of Dave. I have so many pieces of paper, and I don't relate in a living way to the computer. I can, I, it was useful in this meeting to look at things, but I, you know. Is it possible that some of these major plans that we're talking about, could we could receive bound copies of them? For example, I've got zoning plan in a book, and I can find it. Um, different colored covers, of course. Um, would help, so we'd know if it was the red cover, the gray cover, the blue cover, that kind of thing. It's it's going to get really well, long. I mean, the, the major ones. I mean, and and maybe as this list grows, we we at some point identify here are the big ones. Right. Yeah. You know, and and here are, for your knowledge, other ones that happen to exist. Well, I think the ones connected to, I mean. Housing production plan, housing market study, complete streets uh, project, um, the RKG inclusionary zoning feasibility first. study. Need a whole shelf. You would need a whole shelf. I've, I've got some of these in paper in my house. It's just it's very hard to find them. Yeah. Let's compile a list first and then at a later meeting. <laughs> right? We could just have a whole set of them back there. <laughs> Um, okay, that's the documents that pertain to the charge potentially. Um, then, then part of this was what documents of this, which we're not ready to necessarily get to, do we want to discuss in more detail at a meeting versus read and learn on our own? So the point of that one was, are there, it, it's sort of a follow up to, I think what CRC was doing before I was appointed to CRC, which was sort of giving an overview of certain areas of town, certain policies or plans that exist. Do we have any more of those areas that we want to get more education on in a general sense? I know the last agenda potentially had, I think, 
a holdover from this sort of intro period that, that Steve was running well on getting people up to speed. Um, that is, let me know where I come in with this. Um, you know, presentation on the economic development plan, probably should have done that before Jeff left. Um, <laughs> the discussion and present transportation issues, public infrastructure, um, public-private partnership agreements, so P3s um, were some of the ones that were outstanding from that initial list. What, I guess, my thoughts in putting on a discussion on what do we need more information on that we want to have that discussion is, are those still topics that people want a generic discussion on as the committee gets time? Are there others that as we've dealt with stuff, the committee is thinking, oh, we need more background on X um, to help me with some of this unscheduled stuff. Steve. So, for example, the P3s, you know, we had made contact with uh, folks from UMass about coming to speak to this group, mm -hmm. but at the same time, Lynn had contacted them about speaking to the whole council. So it made more sense at first for them to speak to the whole council because we didn't have a specific issue that we are, for us it would have just been for information and then they would have had to repeat that to the remaining eight counselors. So I think the information sessions got us out beyond the waves, mm -hmm. but uh, now I think it's sort of as needed. I'm not sure, what, what, what do you guys? No, I think that's true. Yeah. Dorothy. Um, well, what I learned at the beginning of this committee was when I, when you come in knowing almost nothing about what Amherst has done, um, you know, it's been, a, it's, it's, it's a spiral re recursive process, the, the learning. So, and I'm learning things every week. I, I would like some, um, going through some housing documents in, in detail. What is good here? What do we want to keep? What, how does this relate to some aims that we might want to do? Um, what is difficult? Do these things cross each other out? I mean, would find that useful. I'm, I'm working at I'm doing it on my own, which is hard. Pat? Yeah, it can be uh, tricky to keep all the uh, information in all these different documents about housing or something separate. But I think there's great value in doing it, even if we're going to do it um, as a body, that we're going through it first on our own, because that's when you notice things, when you have a question of interpretation or you start to know what you need more information about. It's like reading a novel in a literature class. You read it on your own, and then you come in, and then there's this discussion that brings out richness that you might or might not have noticed. So I, I think that I totally agree work with is that. Critical. So so when I get, get a general overview before I've had a chance to really go through the document, <clears throat> it's interesting, it's helpful, but it's much better to, to for us to come prepared as to a class, having read it, marked our text up, and be ready to talk about it and ask questions. I, I do agree. So I get I guess that. That becomes our responsibility as we look at the agenda, like, oh, I'd better get on that housing plan because I'm confused or, or I haven't finished it or, or whatever. Does that make sense for people? I was just going to say maybe, that, maybe that's the benefit of having a document like this set out by different okay. areas is as we go through and potentially implement what Dave suggested at the end of each meeting of here's where I'm thinking, that then gives each committee members two weeks to go. Yeah oh, if we're really going to be dealing with transportation issues, maybe I really I need to read the transportation plan <laughs> and refresh my memory as to what that is and all so that we've got this document that says, here's things that relate to transportation, brush up on that. And if we really then, at that first initial discussion of, say, housing that we've talked about with relationship to the impact report, still have a lot of questions. Maybe we're, maybe that we're bringing in people not specifically to that referral, but for a more general discussion mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Maybe that's how we can use these documents more instead of scheduling specific discussions on things that can help us prepare for those referrals that have come to us. Mm -hmm. Other thoughts? Seeing none, I'm gonna move on. We're only seven minutes behind schedule, but that seven minutes is going to be made up in the next three. Any announcements? 
No. <laughs> <laughs> Any items not anticipated by me? Ah, Pat. Well, I, I don't think we don't have time to discuss it. We'll do it for separation of two or three. Would you like that on? I have not fully set next meeting's agenda. Would you like that on next meeting's agenda? I think so. I think, I think we need to talk about it as well as GOL talking about it. You know, for, for Andy. The little wisdom we have in this committee, and you're absolutely right, we need to bring that to that division. Okay. As we look at those agendas, I'm reminded of how many meetings you and I have had over the last couple of months and the word bandwidth. Bandwidth, committee bandwidth, planning board bandwidth, zoning subcommittee. So, you know, as, as I look at all of these topics and what might come before you, there we'll need, we'll yeah, there, there <laughs> needs to be some prioritization of what you and we together can accomplish. So as we think about the master planning process that you outlined for the council and, and for the planning board, and, and I believe we're gonna have a similar discussion of zoning, we just, I think it, we need to be realistic about looking at 2020 and say, so what is the bandwidth of, of this committee mm -hmm. and what are the highest priorities that the council wants to hear from you on? So I'm also kind of hoping that the five of you bring to the council when they're considering something, how quickly they need it back from you, how time sensitive it is, and how does it fit into the context of, of the workload that mm -hmm. you are gonna have on your plate for 2020? So. I'm kind of um, mirroring some of the, the, the words that we heard from the planning board too, because I think they're feeling it as well. Right. So. Okay. So, so that's what I would really appreciate, is knowing that anything you do about the future gets changed, is a kind of future cast of what items are gonna come before us in, in the order you think they might come. That would really help me be prepared. And Sanders. Okay. Anything else unanticipated? My weight gain. Then we are adjourning at 9:29 p.m. 9:31. <laughs> Not on my. I go by what's on my computer here. <laughs> 9.29, oh, now 9.30, but um, I want to thank Athena for coming in on an extra Monday night and Dave for coming in on an extra Monday night and you guys too, because we're getting three in a row this way. So thank you. Have a nice night.